Hey everybody, um, Avid Assistant here, otherwise known as Jack to, to people that, you know, know me. In this video we're going to take a look at the Avid Attic, which is Avid's default uh, backup system. So first of all, um, before we get into demonstrating the Avid Attic and how to use it, uh, let me give a better explanation of exactly what it is and how it works. When you're in an Avid project, right, and when you hit your Command S or Control S or um, you wait for your autosave to do the thing. Whenever you save a project in Avid, um, it's not necessarily just um, saving the project file. Like I'll look inside this project just now. So I'm using this one here. And the project file is this down here, AVP, Avid Project. Um, sure, that will get saved, but that could essentially be disappeared or deleted. It wouldn't really be that big a deal. That isn't uh, the most important thing we're saving when we save. The most important thing we save is the Avid bins, each individual bin file, uh, because it's each individual bin that has our sequences, it has our, you know, our master clips, our synced clips, all of our timelines. So that's really the most important thing we want to preserve. And this is what the Avid Attic will do backups of. So you can see in this finder window here, I've brought up my Avid Attic. Don't worry, I'll show you where it is a little bit later. We'll come back to that. And inside here, we have folders for different Avid projects. Um, so the project I was just in is Avid Assist 100. That's the regular one I use for these videos. And we can see it there. Now, when I go into it in the Avid Attic, we get bins, scripts, and unknown. So unknown is going to try and save other things like color correction presets. It's not something I've ever had to revive from the attic. Scripts is it's saving your script bins if you've been using script sync. Um, and your bins is all of your other bins. Now you'll notice here that you don't actually see AVB bin files. You'll see a folder for each individual bin within the project. And then if you open up the folder, you're going to see a whole bunch of backups here. So I have up to version 123 of this lot cut bin. So every time Avid saves um, the bins within the project, it will save the bins um, here in the actual project. So this lot cut bin will be updated with the latest version. And this new saved version of the bin will also be copied here to the attic. So we can see we're up to um, version 123 here just now, right? Now, if I tab back to my project and if I, you know, make a really slight change here, um, this is the lot cut, just enough that will allow me to save the bin again. And then I go Command S to save, almost it's saved up there. And then I tab back to my finder windows. You can see it's made. Another new version, we now have 124. So every time it saves that bin, um, it'll update it here and it'll copy that new version here. But unlike within the project where we're just saving the latest, the Avid Attic allows us to access each and every one of those um, versions, those, those past saves um, all the way back. And the amount of files that you can have in your Attic depends on your bin settings within your user. Let me show you. So if we bring up our settings, we'll go to our bin settings here under user. And then here we can see here, we can tinker with the maximum amount of files in a project's attic and the maximum amount of versions of a file in the attic. Now, by default, this is much lower. I think it's 1000 files in the project's attic and 50 files, 50 versions of a file, I think is the default. I usually up this um, to 5,200 just to give me more of a backup, more, you know, um, more leeway. Um, it's not something I ever really need, um, but I don't, if you reach the capacity, you will get a warning where um, the Avid Attic will, will warn you that now each time it saves, it's going to delete the oldest one. And I usually just kind of like to avoid that, don't really like that. So. I'll up the capacity here, um, so we never really reach that point. And that pretty much covers us for how all this works. So quick recap, when we save the project, what we are actually saving is the Avid project file and whatever bins are currently open at the time will be updated and saved. Um, now, if you haven't changed anything since the last time you have saved uh, that bin, 
it won't bother making a new one. But if you have made any remotely slight little change, even if it's just adding metadata in a column, it will be updated. And a copy of the new saved bin will be sent to the attic um, for you to revive later, should you need it. Now let's take a quick look at how we would use the attic and how we would revive a bin uh, if we had to do that. So say I was in my project and my sequence became corrupted or um, if I had made an error on the timeline, uh, deleted something, big error, and you know I don't have enough undos left um, in order to revert it back, we could revive a previous version of the sequence from an older version of the bin from the attic. So this is my lock cut bin. I will tab over to my finder window and I'll leave up this finder window here with um, uh, the project, but in my other window here, I'll just re-navigate um, to, to show you where the Avid Attic is, on, on a Mac anyway. Um, but the, the file saving path is fairly similar on Windows. So you're going to go to your system drive. So if you're on a Mac, that'll be Mac HD. And if you're on Windows, this will be your C drive. Um, and then you're going to navigate to your system shared folder. So on a Mac, this is going to be under users, shared. So inside there. And then we can see Avid's created a bunch of folders here for different reasons. And the one that we're going to want to go into is Avid Media Composer with no spaces, because there's also one up here with spaces. We don't want that. We want the one with no spaces. So inside the one with no spaces, we have a, a, f we have a fair amount of very useful Avid folders, including where all your user settings are stored. So if you ever have to um, retrieve settings from an old user profile, or if you want to just delete all the old user profiles from different versions of Avid, that's where you'd find that as well. But what we're after right now is the attic, which is right there. So we'll double click into our attic. We will find the project that we're currently working on, which is Avid Assist 100. And then inside our bins, I'm gonna to go to Lot Cut, since that is the bin that I'm currently using. And you can see that that folder has been modified today. Um, so that's the one we're after. So if we go into Lot Cut, and then I would generally sort um, these by date modified. And then once you do that, you can see how far back you want to go. So I like to have my auto save set to about every five minutes, um, just to give me more increments of these. So that if I was in this exact situation and I was trying to recover a sequence, uh, I haven't lost too much work. So if I tab back to my Avid for a second and I'll show you my auto save settings, I have my auto save interval set at every three minutes and my force auto save at every five. Um, especially since Avid does this in the background now, um, for the most part, it never really interrupts you anymore. So I don't see any reason not to do this. But whatever it is that you've set in that setting, that's roughly how often um, your save intervals are going to be here um, of your bins, um, also including any manual saves that you've done as well. So just go as far back as you think you need to, say as every 50 minutes ago or half an hour ago, you know, when you think the problem occurred, um, and then grab that version of the bin. So this is, um, I'm going to grab one from the day before, and I'm gonna copy that. Then jump back to my project and I'm going to paste it in there. Now you'll see the difference between the version from the attic and the version in my project that I'm using is the file extension. So Avid uses versioning for the file extension, so you're going to have to rename that. But we can't have these renamed exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, add v120 to this. And then I'm going to change 120 here to AVB, Avid Bin. That's the file extension. And then once I rename that, Mac OS is going to get nervous. You sure you want to change the file extension? I'm going to go, yes, change it. And you can see the icons changed as well. So Avid recognizes this. And if I tab back to Avid and refresh my project, it's popped up here, lock cut version 120. Now the catch here is that you can't have two versions of the same bin open at the same time. So if I want to recover a sequence from here, but I still want to keep other new things I've done since this save in my current bin, then what you're going to have to do is open up a third bin, close your current one, then open up the backup. So in my backup, I had a whole bunch of other stuff in here. Say I wanted to recover these effects presets, you can then drag them into your temporary bin, close the backup version, open up your current, and then bring them in. 
So if you wanted to keep the current version of the bin that you're using, that'd be how you go about it. But if you had frequent saves of every few minutes, and it's not an issue to just revert to five minutes ago, then it would probably be fine to simply close the, the current version of the bin, open up the old one, and then open up your sequence, make sure that everything's fine, everything is as it should be, and you're happy to go from there, you haven't lost too much work, and then you can just get rid of the bin with the corrupted timeline, or the mistake that you've made, or with deleted, or whatever else that's caused, you know, you go into the attic. And there you go, Bob's your uncle, you have retrieved a, a previous version of your sequence, or your bin, from the attic. Now, a couple of pointers I would say here, if you're using your home system, like you're not on a Nexus, you're not in a facility, um, I would definitely recommend regularly backing your um, machine, your Avid, um, up to you know an external uh, drive. So back up your system drive, your Mac HD or your C drive, to an external drive on a daily basis at least somewhere. That way you're also backing up your Avid Attic and all of your Avid projects. Or have them go to a cloud sync folder, you know, like Google Drive, Dropbox, something like that. Just anything to keep your Avid Attic and your Avid projects safe, since it can really save your bacon at times. As it has done mine on a couple of occasions over the years. If you are in a facility, however, and you're working on a Nexus in a sort of proper Avid environment, then there's a good chance that the facility is doing their own backups of the Nexus media. And your Avid Attic will most likely be on the Nexus uh, workspace, uh, the same one that holds your Avid projects. That's where it'll most likely be. So there'll be a folder with your Avid projects and then the Avid Attic will be right next to it. But of course, if you are ever in doubt as to where to find it, then you can simply open up your uh, Nexus or your system drive and just search for Avid Attic. And there we go, it, it, it'll come up since it'll be the only thing name like that. So there you go, that is the Avid Attic, a wonderful little automatic backup tool baked into Avid Media Composer that has saved the bacon of many an editor. Thank you very much for watching, especially Avid YouTube members and Patreon members, and I'll see you very soon in the next video where we'll be taking a look at using vertical content within Avid Media Composer.